Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the ascending tracts. What are these ascending tracts? Ascending tracts means these are the tracts which carry the sensation from the periphery to the central nervous system that is the brain. So these tracts help in transmitting the impulses from the periphery towards the center. So we are discussing our CNS lecture under which today's topic is ascending tracts. So let's get into the topic. Today's learning objectives is we are going to discuss about two important ascending tracts which is the dorsal column pathway and ventrolateral spinothalamic tract. We are going to discuss in detail about the tracts, the sensation that is carried by them and their special features. So let's dive into the topic. So coming to the first tract that is dorsal column pathway. This is the most important ascending tract that is present in the humans. So this tract is also called as dorsal column medial lemniscal system. We will try to understand what is this medial lemniscal system when we discuss the tract per se. Then what are the sensation carried by them? This is again very very important. It carries fine touch, vibration, proprioception and pressure. So coming to the fine touch, all of us know is that uh, the touch if it is very soft then it is called fine touch. Then coming to the vibration, we understood that it is a vibration sensation that is sensed by the body. Then what is this proprioception? Proprioception is nothing but the positional sense, sense of position. So if uh, right now I know that I am sitting and my hand is in this position, this is sent to the brain and the brain is performing the action and understanding that the person is in that particular position. That sensation is called as proprioception and pressure. All these are senses which are carried by the dorsal column pathway. And there are some other sensations which are carried by the dorsal column pathway, but still you need an intact cortex to perceive them and understand them. They are also called as cortical sensations. These sensations are also carried through the dorsal column pathway. So what are these sensations? That is two point discrimination. This in the laboratory, how do we do it is we have a divider and we split the ends of it and give the stimulus to the person and ask the person whether he is able to perceive the stimulus as a single stimulus or a two stimulus that is called as two point discrimination and this discrimination distance varies between different parts of the body. Then there is something called as stereognosis. What is the stereognosis? It's one of the beautiful uh, feeling present. What is the stereognosis? Is? This is the ability of the person to identify an object without seeing it just by touching and feeling it the person will be able to identify the object suppose for example i ask the subject to close his eyes and place a known object to him obviously we should place a known object that is he should have known that object previously like a keychain or a coin or a pen something like that and what the person can do is he even with his closed eyes he can touch it and sense it and he can comment that it is a pen or a pencil or a keychain whichever is this presented that stimulus is called as stereognosis. Then there is something called as graphesthesia. What is this gra graphesthesia? All of us would have played in our childhood like we will close our eyes and our friend will be writing some letters on the back of the subject and we will be still able to identify the letters. This you can write it anywhere. For example, ask the subject to close there and you write some letter and the person is able to interpret that letter that is called as graphesthesia. Then there is something called as tactile localization. What is tactile localization? First thing is I will give the subject a stimulus and ask him to say where we have touched him when the person is closing his eyes. So this is called as tactile localization. So all the sensations are also carried by the dorsal column but you need an intact cortex to understand and perceive them. That's why they are named as cortical sensations. And one speciality of this tract is the decusation happens at the level of medulla. What is decusation? Decusation means the fibers crossing from one side to the other side. For example, the right side fibers or the right side pathway, they are crossing to the other side in the medullary region in dorsal column medial lemniscal system. So decusation means it is crossing over. Now let's discuss about the individual pathways in the tract. So this is the dorsal column pathway. And here is the representation of a spinal cord. You can see here the lowermost one is the spinal cord. Then there is a region of the medullary region. And we have the thalamic region here. 
and finally the somatosensory cortex that is the sensory cortex in the brain which is area number 3, 1 and 2. So these are the primary regions in the body where the tract is passing through. So let us try to understand them. This tract has a very good of lo localization. What is this localization? That is fibers from a specific part of a body are carried in a specific region in the tract. For example, the lower sixth thoracic and the lumbar as well as the sacral region. Like all the sensation we have discussed like fine touch, proprioception, vibration and pressure. All of them from the lower part of the body will be carried specifically in one group which goes medially. This medial group of fibers are called as fasciculus gracilis. So let us write it down. It is fasciculus gracilis. And the remaining part, like the cervical region and the upper thoracic region, they are carried in a separate fibers which go laterally. And these group of fibers are called as fasciculus cuneatus. Fasciculus cuneatus. And these fibers will reach the medulla in their particular nuclei. For example, the fasciculus cuneatus will reach a space that is called as the nucleus cuneatus. Nucleus cuneatus in the medullary region. And the fasciculus gracilis, where it will reach? It will reach the nucleus gracilis. So, it is reaching the nucleus gracilis. And they form the first synapse in the medulla. See here, there is no synaptic formation till it reaches the medulla. The first synapse is formed in the medullary region. That's why this neuron is called as first order neuron. So, this neuron group is called as the first order neuron. And from the medulla, the second order neuron starts and they reach the thalamus. So, this group is called as second order neuron. And from the thalamus, they reach the somatosensory cortex via the third order neuron. So, this group of neuron is called as the third order neuron. Why this tract is also called as dorsal column medial lemniscus system? This group of fibers from the second order neuron, they are called as lemniscal fibers. They are also called as lemniscal system, medial lemniscal system. Just pay attention to this region. There is one more fiber which is joining the medial lemniscal system. Even though if it is a crowded diagram, please pay attention to that area. This is also very, very important. The sensations from the facial region, they are carried to the dorsal column and they reach the dorsal column in the medial lemniscus part directly. Somebody has to help to them. Yeah, one of the cranial nerve is helping them. That cranial nerve is nothing but a trigeminal nerve. So, the trigeminal nerves, we will write it down here. So, the trigeminal nerve directly reaches the medial lemniscal system. So, let us revise one more. So, we have the first order neuron which reaches the medulla directly. In the medullary region, they cross to the other side and reach the thalamus. This neuron is called as the second order neuron. From the thalamus, they reach the somatosensory cortex which is called as the third order neuron. And the group of fibers which is going medial, which is carrying the sensation from the lower region of the body, it is called as fasciculus gracilis and they reach the medullary region in the nucleus gracilis. And the lateral one is called as fasciculus cuneatus and they reach the nucleus called as nucleus cuneatus in the medulla. So, this is all the pathway that is about the dorsal column system. Let us just add one more concept to it that is the hemisection of the spinal cord. Let us try to understand what happens to the dorsal column when there is a hemisectioning of the spinal cord. So, let us try to understand. So, suppose I put a lesion here. Let us consider this as the right side and the other side as the left side. So, if there is a hemisection of the spinal cord on the right side, which side sensation is gone? Let us track back the tract. So, let us track back it. Ah, yes, it is it is affecting the right side of the person. So, it is an ipsilateral loss. So, in case of a dorsal column, whenever there is a hemisection, hemisection, it is causing the ipsilateral loss of fine touch and proprioception. For fine touch, proprioception, vibration and all the other sensation that is carried by the dorsal column medial lemniscal system. So, this is very, very important. This hemisectioning we will study in detail in Brown-Sickward syndrome. But just remember, 
in the dorsal column it is affecting the ipsilateral side of the person now coming to the special features about the dorsal column system dorsal column system as i told you it's very very important and the most important thing is it's very fast in conducting also the velocity of transmission is around 30 to 110 meter per second it conducts the impulses very very fast and the degree of spatial localization is high what is this spatial localization here the fibers are going in a particular order for example the lower limb fibers are going medially in the spinal cord and the lateral part is carrying the upper thoracic regions as well as the cervical region fibers this kind of spatial distribution is there till it reaches the somatosensory cortex that is our area 3 1 2 throughout this spatial organization is maintained that's why it is said that high degree of spatial localization is present for the dorsal column fibers and it has the ability to transmit rapidly changing stimuli so remember all these three points our next track will be exactly opposite of this so let's dive into the next track that is the ventrolateral spinothalamic track this tract is also called as instead of ventral some of the books write it is also called as anterolateral spinothalamic tract this is also an ascending tract and it also carries some of the very important sensations in the body like the pain temperature this pain and temperature are two important sensations that is carried by the ventrolateral spinothalamic tract other than this we have the crude touch sexual sensation each tickle all of them are carried through the ventrolateral spinothalamic tract and they transmit the sensation that does not have high degree of spatial localization whereas the dorsal column can transmit with high degree of spatial localization so that is again a difference between the two tracks and coming to the decussation where did we see the decussation in the dorsal column we saw the decussation or the crossing over at the medullary level whereas here the crossing is happening at the spinal cord level itself this makes a huge difference in their presentation when hemisection is done let's try to understand it so coming to this track here we have two components one is anterior another one is lateral this lateral part is very very important because it is carrying the sensation of pain and temperature and all of us know from our pain chapter the pain fibers they are not going only to the somatosensory cortex but they go to several other areas like reticular activating system and so many places but here we will be discussing about the primary pain transmission that is reaching the somatosensory cortex so let's try to understand the anterior tract they carry the crude touch itch tickle and other sensations what they do is they go and reach the spinal cord from the receptors they reach the spinal cord and they form their first synapse in the spinal cord itself you can see here they are forming the first synapse in the spinal cord itself whereas the first synapse in the dorsal column was formed in the medullary region so that's a huge difference so what is this order of neuron this is our first order neuron and once they synapse they cross to the other side in the spinal cord region itself here we can see they are crossing to the other side in the spinal cord region itself and since the crossing is already done they directly go and reach the thalamus so this part or the so this part is called as the second order neuron from the thalamus they reach the somatosensory cortex so finally this is called as our third order neurons and which is the specific region in thalamus that is receiving all this information the thalamus is also called as the relay station the specific part is called as vpl that is ventroposterolateral nucleus ventroposterolateral nucleus of the thalamus both the dorsal column as well as the ventrolateral spinothalamic tract both of them reach the vpl of the thalamus from there they are transmitted to the somatosensory cortex and these kinds of fibers which is radiating they have a special name which is called as corona radiata now let's try to understand what will happen in a ventrolateral spinothalamic tract when there is a hemisection at the spinal cord level suppose we do a hemisection here i cut this region i hemisection this part of the spinal cord what will happen let's try to understand let's consider this is the right side and this is the left side when there is hemisectioning done which side i have done the hemisectioning this hemisectioning is done on the left side so which side pain and temperature is lost let's trace back the pain and temperature of the 
right side is affected we can rightly say that whenever this tract is affected the spinal cord the contralateral side pain and temperature is lost so in a ventrolateral spinothalamic tract what is happening to the hemisection whenever we do a hemisection it is affecting the contralateral side pain and temperature this is again very very important we have to understand the dorsal column it was affecting the same side that ipsilateral fine touch proprioception and other sensation are lost whereas in case of ventrolateral tract the contralateral side or the opposite side is being affected we will discuss again these hemisection in the brown sequet syndrome i hope it's clear till now let's see the special features of spinothalamic tract the velocity of transmission it was very high in case of the dorsal column here it is one third of the dorsal column which is around 8 to 40 meter per second only and the degree of spatial localization is poor and their ability to transmit rapidly changing stimuli is also poor so this is the differentiating features between a ventrolateral and a dorsal column pathway coming to the take home points the dorsal column they primarily transmit the fine touch vibration proprioception sensations and their decussation exists at the level of medulla their decussation is at the level of medulla whereas the ventrolateral pathway their decussation is at the level of spinal cord and this is makes a huge difference in the hemisection where there is a ipsilateral loss in case of a dorsal column pathway and there is a contralateral loss in case of a ventrolateral pathway and the primary sensation carried in the ventrolateral pathway are our pain and temperature i hope it's clear thank you for listening we'll see in the next video thank you so much